If you haven't done so yet, pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. The first part of solving this problem is to use the conservation of energy to determine the final speed of the block marked M1 right before it collides with the block marked M2. And when using the conservation of energy for mass 1, we would take the final energy and set it equal to the initial energy. Let's talk about the initial energy first. Now, the mass marked M1 is released from rest at point A, so that means that there will be no kinetic energy since the block is not moving. But because the block is situated five meters off of ground level, it's going to have gravitational potential energy. And the formula for gravitational potential energy would be the mass of the object times g times its initial height. The block then slides down the frictionless ramp and ends up right about at point B, right before it collides with M2. And when it gets down there, it's back at ground level, and therefore it has no gravitational potential energy, but because it's moving, it would have some kinetic energy. So maybe we could draw mass 1 right here, and we could put little swooshes on it to show that it's moving. And therefore it does have kinetic energy, and kinetic energy is 1 half times the mass of the block times its speed squared. Now, mass appears on both sides of this equation, so if we divide both sides by the mass, then algebraically it would be eliminated. And then we would be left with 1 half v squared equals g times y initial. We're going to solve this for v, so why don't we go ahead and multiply both sides of the equation by 2, and then we'll take the square root of both sides, and of course on the left side, the square root will cancel the squaring. So then we can plug in the known value of g of 9.8, and then the initial height as marked in the diagram was 5 meters. And when you punch that into your calculator, you should get approximately 9.9 .9 meters per second. So this will be the speed with which m1 is moving right before it collides with m2, and perhaps we can mark that on the diagram. We will now move to the next phase of solving this problem, which will be evaluating the collision that is taking place between the two blocks. And the question notes that this collision is a head-on elastic collision. And furthermore, it notes that mass 2 is initially at rest. And this is a very special situation when we have an elastic collision and the second object is initially at rest. Let's look at a formula that captures that scenario. So here is the equation that we're going to use. Again, this is only used in a very specific situation. It's when we have an elastic head-on collision, which the question noted we have, and the second object initially is at rest. If the second object was initially moving, then don't use this formula. Only if that second object is initially at rest can we use this. Now, that we have established that, it's very convenient to use and find the final velocity of object 1. All we have to do is plug in the masses and the initial velocity of object 1. Now the masses were given in the problem. m1 is 5 kilograms, m2 is 10 kilograms. So we can fill those in. And then we just determined the initial velocity of object 1. We're calling it the initial velocity now because this is right before it collides with object 2. So we can plug in that value of 9.9 .9 meters per second that we had found earlier. And then we'll pick up our calculators and determine the final velocity of object 1. And when we do that, we obtain negative 3.3 meters per second, roughly. And notice that because it's negative, this means that after the collision, object 1 will actually be traveling in the opposite direction. So maybe we can come over here into the picture and modify the diagram. So here is the picture after the collision, and notice that block 1 is now moving in the opposite direction from what we had showed earlier. So now we put the little swooshes this way to indicate that the block is going to slide backwards up the ramp. By the way, block 2 is also moving after the collision. We don't really need to concern ourselves with its motion because the question is asking us about the height that m1 will rise to. But just as a side note for your own information, it would be possible to calculate the final velocity of that object 2 as well using this equation. It's somewhat similar to the 
equation we used to calculate the final velocity of block one, but a little bit different. So this would be used if you wanted to find the final velocity of block two, but in this question we're not concerned ourselves with it. I only noted it so you could perhaps write it down for future use. Let's return back to the problem of trying to figure out how high up this ramp block one travels. And to do that, we're going to once again go back and use conservation of energy for block one. And as before, we can set the final energy, the total final energy, I should say, equal to the total initial energy. We'll start again on the initial side of the equation. And initially, the block is moving, but it doesn't have any gravitational potential energy because it's at ground level. So we would have that kinetic energy equal to one half times the mass times its initial speed squared. And then it slides up the ramp and it reaches some final height that we don't know and it stops. Notice up here its final velocity is going to be equal to zero meters per second. Therefore all of that kinetic energy is transformed into gravitational potential energy. So we would set that as the final energy. We would have the mass times g times that final height. Mass appears on both sides of the equation so we can divide by m and cancel it out. And then we can divide both sides of the equation by g so that it cancels out on the left hand side. So the final height would be equal to, let's see, one times the initial velocity squared would just be vi squared, and then that would be divided by 2g. So we can take the initial velocity that we had determined and plug it in, don't forget to square it, and then we'll divide by 2 times 9.8. And we end up with approximately 0.556 meters for the final height. So this will be the final and correct answer to the question. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe and also click that thumbs up. And remember that you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.